Bom dia, everybody. So, Jackson, Chris G as a special guest, and Rafael back to the Fortunato podcast. This is episode what now? 26, I, I think. 26, 27. Yes. I don't know. Hopefully, we can make hundreds Guys, more. Guys, today was by far one of the most amazing conversations we have with uh, Chris Diaz came to join us. We Can't talked about uh, his experience with Jiu-Jitsu in the mats when we met and before we met, he'd been training Jiu-Jitsu for a long time. Mm. We talked about foundation training, how much he improved his movement daily and got out of pain through foundation training that I had the opportunity to share with him. And uh, about the Little Lions class, with the Autism Spectrum special program that we have once a week. It's a non-profit awesome. organization yeah. that we're running and uh, great results, uh, good feedback from Chris and all his experience with his son Alejandro. We talk about the book that he wrote about mm. Alejandro and uh, what else? What else that we brought up on this podcast? Yeah, no, the, the most important part, the topics are there, but the most important part, if you need to hear this is a story about why jiu-jitsu can change your life is exactly mm. this. So if you yes. need a, another reason of why you should train jiu-jitsu to transfer in whole your aspect of life, this is it. And for you that is suffering from pain, the part of foundation training foundation is Foundation training mm. and jiu-jitsu, the combination of these two things in your life can give you a very solid stand for everything you're gonna do mentally and physically. We need that and this, the, the older we get, the more need we're gonna have of tools to improve life because in the end of the day, everything we do is to have that 20 years, mm. maybe we maybe we all gonna die at the same age, but the last 20 years, the quality of life you're gonna have during those years, you know, like gonna make a huge difference. And I think Jiu Jitsu and Foundation Training can bring you smooth on the life ride that we are all in and uh, give you a better quality of life yeah. there. Amazing. Thank you, Chris, okay. again. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Listen up. Listen See you up. guys next time. Listen to it. Bye. Chris, Gias, as a special guest, and of course, Jackson, a little bit beat him up before coming to class, no? <laughs> no, I heard, I heard that story. We just finished, <laughs> we just finished training. Training I was, uh, me and Chris were training private at the gym. We spent an hour there training, studying jiu-jitsu together. Amazing. Man. It was a good time. Awesome we discussed a lot about the concept of the application of jiu-jitsu in a friendly, safety way. You know, me and Chris, we come from a different background and uh, I'm very excited to have him here today and share a little bit of the experience with jiu-jitsu. Our friendship, one of my best friends since I arrived in, in Houston. He was great. And I uh, was so happy to have him back in the house and sharing jiu-jitsu and all his experience with us. And uh, yeah, I want to introduce my friend Chris Diaz. How are you feeling today, Chris? Man, I'm 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 still sweating. <laughs> from class. It was a good it was a good workout. It yeah, was a good work, as always, yeah. as always. We discussed a little bit about uh, the intensity of jujitsu, right? Yeah. When we start training first, we got like excited and want to go and want to catch each other like in the old days. But then, uh, and then we felt that the intensity was wrong for the, for, for the time. And then we sat, we talked a little bit about the new concept that I have about Jiu-Jitsu now. It's mm. been training in a, with a different it's new mindset. And old, right? It's new and old, like uh, new and when old. Elio started, the, yes. the Jiu-Jitsu was always defensive. It was never an attack-based thing. Yes. Huh? Yeah. And then we, that's, that's where we end up. We're going to the defense part. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and Chris was saying to me, oh, you know what? I've been training Jiu-Jitsu for many years, but I never really learned too much of defense in Jiu-Jitsu, you know, until he rejoined me in my gym now with a different mindset that we really aim to focus more in, in the defense aspect of Jiu-Jitsu, mm -hmm. what's, of course, give you a much better control of your stamina during the training, and uh, I think that was great. Yeah. I think that was very uh, good. Yes, it was a it was a good lesson. I think for me personally, uh, I think well, not just for me. I think for everybody, there comes a point where you have to recognize that you're not 18 <laughs> anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, and as we get older, we have to change. Yeah. And uh, being taking the offensive, or as you were telling me, you know, you just keep going, go, go, mm -hmm. go, and 
and sometimes you have to slow down and you have to start adjusting and right. get, getting in closer and tighter and and, uh, mm -hmm. and not giving any inches. Yes, it's give less. A, yes. Give less. It's, it's a good, very good lesson to learn, and, mm -hmm. and there are some interesting habits to, yeah, to break to out change, of. to break the habits. One of the examples I can bring it up in the training today specific was me trying to sweep Chris. I had the sweep, but Chris have an incredible base. He's super strong in the base. And I say like, oh, let's go. Let's see how much he can resist the sweep <laughs> here. And he did resist and I didn't sweep him. And we come back to the same position again. And I felt his breathing going like a little bit more excessive because of that holding that's not accepting the sweep resistance there pushed his guys a little further and then after when we start to talk i say yeah that sweep there if it was me with the mindset that i have now i would resist a little but when i realize that you have it like all the elements there i would let you sweep me and make a plan for the landing mm -hmm. you know like i would get the sweep i would go and you come on the top now but i would prepare myself mm -hmm. to fight you from defensively from the back now and make the game flow a little more and go through more situations. Mm -hmm. And uh, we both agree that was uh, one of the things that we took off the training mm -hmm. to compare the mindset before, like that sweep, before we learned that sweep would count two points. Right. And that would be like, no, you don't want to yeah, give, like can, give. can be the end. I used to instruct my students saying like, hey, sometimes you're going to train with your friend, like in one sweep count two points and that would give him the, the, the winning. And now the, the, the mindset that I have now is completely different than that. You know, Correct, like yeah. if you see your partner have the sweep, let him have it. Give that to him. Mm -hmm. Great job. Right. Give the sweep to him. Land safe in a position. Play guard. Show up what you have from there. You know, mm -hmm. you should you should be able to cover all areas anyway. Absolutely. You 100%. know, like yeah. So uh, let's give people a little bit of content of your story, Chris. I think it was interesting. We were talking a little bit before. There's a story that you have from your whole beginning of jujitsu. So what is the story behind it? Ah, uh, let's see. <clears throat> I remember it was back in 2009. I was stationed with the government in Guatemala at the embassy. And uh, there were one of my teammates who was working with me. Uh, he was a liaison. He was a military liaison and he was a Green Beret as, and his, uh, his name is Danny. Mm -hmm. And Danny said, hey, have you ever heard of this thing called jujitsu? <laughs> and I said, I said, uh, cause I used to do stand up in college. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, and I had some training with, with the government and I, I, I acknowledged that I, I was familiar with it, UFC. And he says, you should check it out. On Saturdays, we, uh, we go over to this gym. Uh, it's a Gracie gym. Yeah, and it's it's about two blocks from the embassy. So I said, I said, I don't know if I really want to go. He goes, No, you can go. In fact, the instructor, his name's Robert Fleischman, and he said, uh, my friend Danny said, uh, he goes, Dude, he you can go and you talk to him, and he'll tell you you can do anything you want. And so I, I had done stand up in college. I said, Anything you want. He goes, Dude, anything you want. And it's a trial period. And then so. Uh, we at at the time we we were at a at a bar and I said you know what I'll, I'm gonna commit to you I'm gonna give it a <laughs> shot if I can do anything I want to go <laughs> go to the gym it was a Saturday and uh, and uh, Robert Fleischman the professor Fleischman said you can do anything and I did and I and that lasted about 15 seconds <laughs> and then I ended up on the ground and uh, and that was it that sold me and it's mm -hmm. and it's true I mean jujitsu is. Is, is pretty amazing and that school was uh, very self-defense oriented right right and um, at the time work was there was a lot of work to be done and I probably went about once a week uh, I caught the bug and I, I wish I could have gone every day mm -hmm. and I remember him saying is listen you're a professional you have a career uh, just try to come once a week one mm -hmm. hour just try one hour a week and that's what I was able to commit to and as I was telling you earlier that yeah. my my wife said I worked my way out of a job. <laughs> uh, I worked too hard, and and I was I uh, I did a good job, and because of that, I ended up getting uh, moved Amen. to Puerto Rico, which there were the part of the island that I was at. There were no jujitsu schools, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, me and a couple guys bought some mats from Sam's Club, and uh, <laughs> we would roll around in the garage and just, you know. 
Just trying to understand it. how. Yeah. yeah, you get on YouTube, works, and, and yeah, I had yeah. one hour a week for probably five right, months, right. and uh, and so I didn't, I didn't. Uh, I mean, we had fun, and uh, unfortunately, at the time, my wife uh, had cancer, mm -hmm. so I was able to be transferred temporarily to Virginia. Mm. And while I was in Virginia, I was in an office, and uh, during my wife's chemo treatment. Uh, she had breast cancer, and mm -hmm. I, I like talking about it because I yeah. think people need right, to know right, that right, right. it's okay it's to talk about yeah, you know yeah, situations yeah. like that. And uh, uh, a good young man named Frank Cucci told me uh, I was talking to him one day if if, if he knew of any jujitsu schools that I could work out because I needed some decompression because right. it was it was serious business right, 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 for my right. wife's health. Yeah, and at the time my son was uh, very young. Mm -hmm as well and uh so so my my this guy frank coochie said hey you know as a uh where are you looking at working out and i saw i uh, over across cross and don't cross and he starts laughing he goes what's the name of the school he tell i tell him the name and he says ah that's my dad's gym <laughs> what? i'm gonna hook you up so he he Perfect. made arrangements for me to go work out amazing jujitsu at the school that was probably less than a half an hour a half a mile away from my parents house where mm. we were staying and Perfect. so uh meant to I, be yeah it was meant to be i was able <laughs> to, to go be. two two times a week and to be honest i don't remember a thing right uh i don't remember anything i learned but what i do take away from that experience was the learning learning to breathe it literally it, it took my mind away from my wife's treatment Mm -hmm. Just that, just that, yeah. that one hour of getting, uh, <laughs> having some bigger, very, very right, right. skilled guys knowing what they were doing, uh, to a new white belt, but mm. the, you know, and then being you know, very generous, but learning how, learning to just try to catch my breath. That mm -hmm. was a big, uh, very Less. cathartic and therapeutic mm -hmm. moment, uh, for me just to escape the daily stressors of dealing with cancer yeah. mm -hmm. it oh, gave yeah. you some headspace for the rest of your day oh, if you're sure. your week yeah it's interesting when I you know I've heard it before but when problems that are affecting you in your life right before class whether it's the guy cutting you off in traffic or or at things at work or mm -hmm. at the house uh, after class, it just doesn't seem like a problem anymore. Yeah, 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 like yeah. In class, you had some guy literally trying to choke you. Yeah. And you managed to work your way through yeah. it. And then after class, you have the endorphin bump and, and you're super relaxed. And and who cares if the guy cuts you off and drops Yeah. You know, it's very therapeutic. It's very humble. Yeah, I know. Did you just had the same effect with me in the mm -hmm. beginning for sure? Yeah. Yeah. No, and I've be, been sharing this uh, with, with many people after I read the book. And I mentioned it to Jackson, many of the moms that have uh, boys. Is that we when we were a, we were a child we wrestle with each other with brothers and dads mm. and everybody just to learn self control we do it naturally and it's because that testosterone dump that we have when we are growing up and now I tell every adult that I meet every man that I meet is like you need to do something to get that testosterone bump a little bit lower mm. because that testosterone is the one that gives us that chest bump I want to like punch people in the face just because they come in traffic. So that gives us a little bit of room in our head to like relax. That there's nothing else yeah. to do because I've trained you to today. Well, not My levels that, are a little bit <laughs> more balanced. So I can balanced, be okay. But you also get a very a healthy uh, teaspoon full yeah. of medicine of hey, there's is someone of humility <laughs> bigger and stronger than you. Yeah, of course. Uh, and more course. technical. Yeah, than you. And he's amazing. He's amazing. It gives you that that like okay, relax a little bit. Yeah, there's for nothing sure. else that you need to do. Yeah. But after so after Virginia, after cancer treatment, we went back. Uh, to Puerto Rico mm. and um, my son ended up getting or he was having epileptic seizures and then uh, they started increasing getting a little bit more hardcore and at that moment in time uh, a, as a family we made a decision for after cancer treatment and for his epilepsy uh, to go back to the United States mm. and uh, with regards to my wife's cancer, there were only two hospitals that had papers and studies that were instructing protocol treatment. And one was in France and the other one was in Houston. And, and I, I, I 
I knew I would probably never be able to go to France. <laughs> so we picked, right. we were able to pick Houston. We have family in Texas, which that worked out yeah. really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, we arrived October 2013, and uh, I ended up signing up at a, at another gym in in, uh, in Houston mm-hmm. in November, and uh, I've been trying to go every week ever since. Yeah, it's been fantastic. It's been a wonderful experience. Like eight experience. years, seven eight years since you arrived here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's been a good. And that's how we met, huh? When you yeah. signed to the gym, I remember you arriving there. Yeah. And we shared a little bit of jujitsu, and uh, we got hooked, man, as yeah. a friend, as a teacher and student. Yeah. Either way, you know, you teach me so much life skills, things in life. You know, I learned so much from you <laughs> and your family. You know, and uh, and then we end up in the mats again. Yeah. You know, through your back situation that you had, a back injury. So, and, and, and you and I, I didn't get to train with you for a while. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and and I, I was still at the same school. Great experience. But at a certain point, I ended up hurting my back. Mm-hmm. And that was... That was in August 2018. I hurt mm-hmm. really bad. I couldn't I couldn't walk for a week. And uh, and it's, I realized at that point I thought I could never do jujitsu again because it was so debilitating. Oh. And uh, and and at, you ca- you reached out to me on Facebook because I think I threw a post out there like right. hey, I, don't, I, I have to quit my hobby that my passion. Mm-hmm. And then you you reached out to me and say hey what's going on and I explained that I hurt my my lower back I had some bulging discs and uh, and you had said hey come over and check and, and swing by and uh, swing by my gym and, and um, I'm gonna show you a couple things and I was like well, you crazy man I can't teach you <laughs> anymore and you're like no I'm not talking about that I'm talking about uh, foundation training and uh, so I did some research and I did three classes with you and if it was the, the, re- the reason I was able to uh, stop taking uh, uh, pills that assisted with pain, mm-hmm. pain management, mm-hmm. and uh, and I and I've been doing foundation, just like brushing your teeth, yeah, every yeah. day, and it's provided me assistance. And then after getting to uh, talk to you, you were telling me one of the attractive things about your gym was the uh, the class. It's an adaptive class on on Sundays, Little Lions Club for mm-hmm. children on the autism spectrum, yeah. mm. and my son happens to have autism. And he's eight years old. Mm-hmm. That's a and then you joined the class, and now yeah, you... Yeah, we were doing... I was... Because I couldn't do anything with my back, but I could right. go with my son. Right, right. And then and that's how it started, yeah. That's how it started, to be able to come back. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, I never thought... that All the doctors tell you... Uh, you know, doctors... God bless them. <laughs> They're fantastic. I love doctors. But I... I there are a lot of times people like to tell you what you can and can't do. And uh, the world of autism, autism spectrum disorder, the ASD, it's so varied. If you meet one child on the spectrum, you meet one child on the spectrum. Everybody's different. Yeah. But a lot of times some doctors can come in and give you wide paint strokes of what the future will hold. Mm-hmm. And uh, every 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 time we would get a diagnosis or a discussion about what your child can and can't do in the future, uh, you know, it's hard as a parent. And uh, one of the things was, you know, you'd never be able to do any sports or Mm -hmm. do any teamwork, you know, Mm -hmm. or there'd be challenges with that. Mm -hmm. And Alejandro, my son, is he's nonverbal. And what nonverbal means for our son means that he uh, he can express his wants and needs and if he wants water he can express that he wants water but the daily conversation or, or what did you do today or or you walk through the door and him come running up and say hey dad or how was your day that was not in our life at the time mm-hmm. and so my wife Claudia she would always say I think jiu-jitsu would be perfect for Alejandro Mm-hmm. This is before Claudia was saying it. Yeah, she was, and this is before. Uh, she's wise. She's very wise. <laughs> uh, she is very wise. She married me. <laughs> uh, she, the, the 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 challenge of of wanting to do something with your child is a big one, and she kept saying, you know, vestibular and proprioceptive 
measure. That's where the, the jumping up and down or, or the crashing sensation or the feeling of pressure and hugs is very good for our kiddos on the autism spectrum. Mm. And so she always would see me come home with, with bruises and scratches right, right. and she, used, she would talk about how you must have been doing some proprioceptive and vestibular mm -hmm. training at class. <laughs> and, um, and so she would always say, you need to, you need to get him into a class. And jujitsu, so I thought, um, was very, for lack of a better term, it's a thinking person's event. You have to be cognitively aware that someone is hurting you in order to tap. Right. And at the time, my son was not there. Mm -hmm. To be able to acknowledge that somebody is doing something or to f even follow instructions that was mm -hmm. very challenging in our own home so the thought of taking him to a jiu-jitsu class was not even on my radar mm -hmm. and then when you told me about little lions club and how one of the dads his son is on the spectrum mm -hmm. and that raised my interest and yeah. i i uh i went to the class and then i watched and i saw how everybody in the class was accepting Everybody in the class was at different levels. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, everybody in the class was, was having their own personal journey experience, like me, mm -hmm. but it was yeah. modified. Right. So yeah. I decided to take him. In the first couple classes, and you remember, remember he wouldn't yeah. want to put on his yeah, uniform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just, just put the uniform was already a challenge, and when he yeah. did it... He, he gave him a shirt to yes. put on, and he, he put on the shirt because it was silky smooth. Mm -hmm. My dad, uh, at the and he had some sensory issues with textures mm -hmm. and um, and he and he was able he put on his uniform and then it was walking on the mats because the mats were soft and squishy right. and cold different, that was different. texture yes and, and uh, we would do laps and I would carry him right, remember right, so right. you wouldn't have to touch the mat right but over time uh, the, the gains that he has done if anybody had told me that my son could do uh, a double leg takedown get into the mount, spider guard, yeah. Who uh, knew? bulldozer, take the back now. Mm -hmm. Two weekends ago, he learned, he would play crazy horse. Oh, yeah. we too. And he was able to, at home, right. if I do, if I'm laying and stretching, <coughs> he'll get on my back, put his hooks in, and he'll get a seat belt, and then he'll, he holds. He, he'll, he'll hold on and he'll whisper in my ear, uh, wake up crazy horn <laughs> <laughs> to, play, to play the jujitsu games right, right. and I honestly thought I mean who would have I, I would never have never have thought mm -hmm. that he would be able to get where he's at mm -hmm. and it's just That's these so lessons cool. over and over again as a parent with a kid on the spectrum mm -hmm. that man, you can't you can't set limits on yourself you have to get out and try. Yeah. 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 You have to yeah. Make test it. Effort. That's a small. Because every test every small. person gonna act different, gonna every react person. different. You never know until like you fully put this in a fully test, like you did it Alejandro oh, against the sure. doctor's word, against like everybody saying that was impossible, you know? Right. And he got all the benefits and now you guys are having fun there. Well, we have fun and it's and it, and I, I know my wife and I talk about, you know, I have the luxury to go to work. Mm -hmm. I have people at work. We talk about work stuff, and uh, and she's with him all day long. Mm -hmm. We homeschool. Mm -hmm. uh, we we homeschool him, and we go. Through, he has therapy at the house. Mm -hmm. and he does yoga and ABA applied behavioral analysis therapy. It's where mm -hmm. you, you you work on your behaviors. Mm -hmm. and, very intensive, six hours a day. Wow. He does that, and then he homeschools an hour and a half on top of that. And so, my wife has this incredible bond with him. Mm -hmm. yeah. I get to see my son before work and after, after work. work. So I don't. My and after work is probably his bedtime already. Yeah. yeah. Dinner. We try to have dinner together, work permitting, mm -hmm. and um, put him to bed and read some books or you know watch a couple videos mm -hmm. he likes music so we watch videos mm -hmm. and a lot of the you know and as a parent you want to have a, bo a bond yeah and so that was something that my that claudia had been wanting for me to have with him is my own personal bond with and that's with him. And the so, class. yeah and now we have and that's a passion of mine and for me to be able to share it mm -hmm. with him and to see the absolute growth mm -hmm. that uh that he's been having is just incredible. Yeah. In fact, a little quick story. My 
Alejandro's put it in context. Alejandro is eight years old, mm -hmm. and again, it, it, he's he'll be turning eight next week uh, in December, mm -hmm. and he has just recently at seven and a half recently acknowledging my wife as mom mm -hmm. and he's recently i mean can you, can you imagine seven yeah, and a half years yeah. never hearing that yeah wow. right so one day we were practicing uh monster guard mm -hmm. chris chris brooks is right, the right. instructor for chris the, brooks uh, little, little, the brain uh, the brain the of brain. the little chant the little lions, the little lions. Yes. He's, he's phenomenal and so um I was at the breakfast table and we were practicing uh, at Monster Guard. And Monster Guard is where you, you wrap your legs around, you cross your feet, mm -hmm. and then you, you, you get your hands and you hold, you hold the guy's the posture, guy, posture yes. and, you, and you bring your head in really tight. Well, that's a hug. My son, at the time, seven and a half years, never hugged my wife. Hmm. Wow. Seven and a half years. And so I'm at the breakfast table and uh, we're practicing. He sits on my lap, he wraps his legs around and he, and, I, and it's because one of the challenges is he had very low muscle tone because of his epilepsy. Mm -hmm. It's years of therapy in order for us to be able to develop mm -hmm. his core strength and muscles. But for him to bring his hands around, to clasp, to, 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 to apply pressure, to bring it in as a hug, uh, he's he, it's been very difficult. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what that's one of the challenges of doing the monster guard So we always practice but I'm practicing it as jujitsu, right? My <laughs> wife is watching me get hugs, hugs all the time <laughs> yeah. And this is a morning and she's that's there amazing. and I remember her being very emotional <laughs> And I said what's wrong and she said, you know, I've never do you think he could do that to me and I said yeah, sure. He, I don't know how the way you give mommy a monster guard. Uh -huh. So he goes and sits on her lap and he does the whole thing and she's crying because, and it, it hit me that she had never Got been hug. hugged before. Right. And that's the power of of working out in the little lions that we were able to take a jujitsu concept, work on it, right. and be able to apply it. But it means so much. It's more, it's beyond a, yeah. doing a monster guard. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. an actual hug. So now it's been... Uh, a blissful six months of him uh, giving us you hugs guys every over. day. So yes. we were able to, we don't call it Monster Guard. Right. Uh, <laughs> hey, give me a jujitsu hug. Right, right, <laughs> so right, right. He ends up, so he'll run across the room. And, and that and can be from a double leg, leg hugging the leg, yeah. can be a hug from the back, oh, can be a awesome. hug from the top. That's it's amazing. Awesome. And it, uh, it's no, crazy, incredible, incredible. Yeah. incredible. And uh, on our last podcast, we talked a little bit about the jujitsu philo uh, psychologists, yeah. you know, and... Uh, and one of the things that make jiu-jitsu very, very different and so amazing and create this bound of people like you and me, you and me, Rafael, and all the students and all the kids and you and Chris Brooks, mm -hmm. you and your son now, and it's exactly this, is the difference of jiu-jitsu is this contact sport. Mm. You know, this thing that when I look at first in Brazil, when I first was invited and I went to look what jiu-jitsu was, I say, no, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. I don't like it because it's too much of contact for me. Right. But when I experience that and the friendship and what that thing invisibly bring to us, mm -hmm. you know, like the fact that you and me, we roll this morning there and we try to control each other. Mm -hmm. You know, it's an invisible connection that jiu-jitsu creates. Mm -hmm. You know, that other sports, they don't have that same thing. Yeah. Right. You know, they're also amazing for many other things, but there is not this contact this touch mm -hmm. this hug after jujitsu you know strong handshake with the hands like look in mm -hmm. the eyes this this body thing you know and uh in the uh, adapting this philosophy of jujitsu to the the little lions class you know for the kids that i never thought that too mm -hmm. i never thought when you told me the first like jackson you're not gonna believe alejandro gave me a hug mm. and uh and, and you and you broke that story for me i was like man i never that's, thought about yeah. it you know i never thought the other thing that was very impressive impressive for me was the gi you know like mm -hmm. not just with alejandro but all the kids that are yeah. part of this program the the special program it's uh the, the parents told me like just they feel protected inside mm -hmm. the uniform now it's like they have this shield around them mm -hmm. what's really? allowing them to bang the wall a little more <laughs> and explore the place you know like you don't understand how it's uh 
For a kid like Alejandro to walk in here and see everything different for him mm. is a different world, is a different everything. Mm. You know, like so so just the fact now they have this yeah. cover, you know, for him to come That's and do a little hug shield. and a little touch is different. It's you a know? big deal. That's there's super a, cool. There's a, a a concept it's it's a sensory processing disorder. And what it is is it's it's there are some children who uh, it is believed that they are the way they interpret light, color, sound, taste, texture mm. is completely different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, you may be too young, but do you rem do you, did you have chalkboards? Mm -hmm. Remember in the when school? You were in the yeah, school? yeah. You remember someone walking across and taking their nails and scratching oh, the chalkboard? Oh yes. Uh, yes. It sounds uh -huh. yeah. okay. So th that's the way I can try to relate how. Uh, some children has have may have an issue with color or the texture of of, of something new something new mm -hmm. on their yeah. skin that they may not. It's the same how we interpret the sound of nails like a, on a, yeah. a soft surface. It could be really uncomfortable yeah. or right. walking barefoot in grass. Something mm -hmm. new, maybe too much stimuli for too them. Too much yeah. stimulation for them. They can't process it. Mm -hmm. So you know, so there are some children that like the gi because it's heavy. And it's comforting, like right, you talk. Right. Some children may not like the gi because it's be too much because of the texture mm -hmm. yeah. of the fabric, and so a rash guard may help. So right. I mean, it's just yeah. it's getting to know your child. You just adapting, right, right, right. yeah, adapting and the, to them. Yeah, and the parent knows the best. And, and no, seriously, when the uh, when me and Chris Brooks we first had this talk together, you know, and we thought like. Chris, Chris was the, 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 the first believer, you mm -hmm. know, he come to me and say, look, we can, we can do this. We can adapt these 10 games you guys use for the kids and we can adapt them in a way that the kids with autism are going to be able to absorb it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was very open. I say, yeah, of course, let's try it. But Chris Brooks, he's, he have this magic, you know, he have this passion, mm -hmm. you know, like as you do. You know, like to it's personal. Make it happen. You know, mm -hmm. like let's make it it's happen. Personal. You know, there is a way to make it happen. Of course, you just have all these benefits that bring to everybody. You know, but he was he managed to create this new leg of right. the programs that we have using the ideas. And uh, and first the idea was let's get these kids in a in a in a different type of class, and eventually we can merge them mm -hmm. to the group class. Right. But then this class got so good and so perfect and works yeah, I don't think you so do. well, you know, now it's a totally yeah. the families, you know, like one thing that we re-identified right in the beginning, like the parents have to join. Have to. You yeah, know, absolutely. the parents have to join, like because we, we experienced the beginning, the parents let the kid in and the parents want to go in. They yeah. want to go in, but like just because it doesn't work like that in other classes, we changed it. We say, Chris, let's make mandatory. The parents have to walk in the mats. They can buy mm -hmm. optional for them to buy a uniform and look like the kid to incentive the kid too. Mm -hmm. You know, but that like, was the first thing that really worked well. Wonderful. And now, like you go to the class and all the parents with the kids, we all run together and we share that moment together. You know, it's it's, it's really it's nice. It's a family uh, of of their own there in a, in every Sunday. For I, sure. And I totally want to dedicate this podcast to the to the little lions yeah. Yeah. group. You know, great. for you and for Chris Brooks that been yeah. putting all this effort in this class, because believe me, I go there once in a while. And uh, it's always like a renovation of everything to be in that class, you know, yeah. like to see the effort and to see the kids smiling there and play around and stripe days, right? <laughs> oh man, the stripe days, wow, these kids get these stripes and, and how much they honor, how much they honor that achievement. Yeah. You know, and uh, another thing that I noticed in comparison with the a regular kids class I wish I could make mandatory for the regular kids class parents being the mats, mm. right? Because there is this totally yeah. disconnection between the parents, right? Right. They come to the class is a different purpose. They come to the class to actually disconnect from the kids. Correct. So they stay on the phone. <laughs> they they go do errands, mm. yeah. you know, and then in the in the in the in the autist, in the class with the kids, the special autism, yeah. you know, it's just different, right? The parents have yeah. the 
the class as a tool to connect with the child more. now. Mm -hmm. You know, like right. that's part of the program. What's make them totally different? You know, like 100%. and uh, and you can uh, take those techniques and you can apply them to have that connection in the house. Mm -hmm. So mm. you're not practicing. You're, yes. you're connecting with your child. Yeah. Because, for example, in our house. At the time, he's he Alejandro. I mean, in the past six months, he's flourished and it's been incredible. My mm -hmm. wife works so hard. So with good him. to hear. Yes. And, and but the ability to have play or to have that connect where you can interact with my in my particular situation, every mm -hmm. child is different. But for us to be able to connect and have that bond and to be able to play, mm -hmm. and we're still working on jujitsu because. In our world, the, the regular world out here, uh, no offense to anybody watching, it's not designed for our kids. No. It's the survival of the fittest. As much as we want to pretend that we want everybody to be open mm -hmm. and, uh, and to be kind, mm -hmm. the rea there is a reality that not everybody's going to be kind and mm -hmm. not everybody's yeah. going to be accepting and that there are going to be people mm -hmm. who may try to take advantage of our kids mm -hmm. and bullying in school is real yeah. yes it is a real concept and make no mistake i don't have any illusion that my son would ever be able to be able to defend himself punching and kicking somebody who's considered neurotypical, mm. a typical kid. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But through repetition and time, I truly believe that my son can do a double leg takedown right. and be able yeah. to defend himself right. in the sense of being able to protect himself mm -hmm. for a few moments until uh, adults can come and, and take care of him. Yeah. You don't have to punch and kick. And Just that's the those beauty. moves record. Just those yes. moves to be mm -hmm. able to protect his face and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and through the repetition of games and he likes that and he recognizes the different moves and positional mm -hmm. control. And these are concepts that I never yeah. thought he would ever be exposed to exactly. or that he would ever understand, and he mm -hmm. does. And that's one of the beauties that we, that I take about being able to be present in class, mm -hmm. yeah. that we can play together right. and bond, right. and then be able to take those lessons and at the home mm -hmm. to go over it in play mm -hmm. and to constantly have that repetition. Mm -hmm. And I sit and I look at it, can you imagine in 15 years? Right, 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 when he's years. a teenager and you know, an adult. Of repetition. Adult. He's a black belt now in jiu-jitsu. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. But I, at least... He will be, he least, will be. I, I believe he will be. I believe, you I know? believe. But they're just the mere concept. We're gonna have the little little lions <laughs> black belt <laughs> rings. It would be awesome. Yes, it would be awesome. Uh, just the concept of him being able to have this repetition of fifteen min yeah. moves or techniques for over fifteen years of having just the basic mm -hmm. understanding of being able to protect himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is that's that's that'll be his toolbox for life. For yeah. life, and that's in, that's incredible. Especially coming from what we talked about earlier of the of everybody telling me doom and gloom. Yeah, and you won't be able to do anything. You won't be able yeah. to do anything, and then uh, you know, you know, at a, you know, my when we first moved here, we moved specifically to this part of Texas, uh, Katy, Texas, uh, because it had allegedly the the best special needs education program. Mm -hmm. And we had an unfortunate situation where our son was abused by his teacher in that. school, remember? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, uh, and him and several other children. And not, not to get deep into that, but yeah. that st as a parent, that sticks with you. Right. That right. your son has been victimized, mm -hmm. you know? At three and a half, he probably may not remember. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but... What I do know is that now there is a sense of pride in him and a, a accomplishment in the right. techniques that he's doing. Mm -hmm. He does yeah. understand that these games have a purpose, which mm -hmm. is really cool. Mm -hmm. In fact, yesterday I was in the car, and mind you, he's still considered nonverbal, mm -hmm. but he's now starting to be able to answer questions. Mm -hmm. So I asked him, <laughs> just out of the blue, and I said, Alejandro, do you, do you know what the three T's? 
three T's are. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's part of uh, the bullying right, program. Right, and right. he goes, talk, tell, tackle. And ah, that made me super proud wow. that, he, that he was able, one, he knew right, it was, right, right, he right. was able to communicate it right. to me. But then he, he knew that he, he knew, and we, we, we were always constantly talking. Yeah. The mix of the words with the action that he constantly yes. do in yes. the gym, with the dummy, with the people and everybody. Yeah. So you for know? him to be able to do that, That's powerful. Yeah. it's such an incredible moment mm-hmm. in our world. Some people uh, may not understand. Those of you who, who are familiar with autism will understand. Yeah. yeah. But there's, you know, that milestone of being able to understand the question respond mm-hmm. appropriately mm-hmm. and for for me personally for it to be uh married up with the jujitsu mm-hmm. it's just oh man cloud nine it's incredible right, right. it's an incredible you speak in a language with your son that you both understand right on yeah, yeah. yeah. and right share that moment in the gym yeah and uh, another thing that I found Amazing. out, get involved with you and uh, in this program and Chris Brooks and everything and everybody, was like you found very little options of sports. Oh, zero. Like out there, right? Like it's, it's very rare. little yeah, you can rare. find there. And then that's one of one of the things that really pushed me. It's uh, people don't want to donate their time. Is you, right. they don't they don't want to put their life towards that thing on something like there yeah. is. I believe there is a lot of options. There there are options, but one of the issues is do they understand autism? Right, right. Yeah. And autism has has so many different aspects to it, mm-hmm. and there are very minimal amount of activities where the parent is allowed to participate mm-hmm. and it goes back mm. to your the parent knows the child best yeah and you know if your child likes grass or not or mm-hmm. if they, if, if they yeah. need sunglasses or not and so not having to sit on the sideline not only is there anxiety with the child mm-hmm. <laughs> who's on the field by themselves with other kids who may or may not be mm-hmm. on, uh, have special needs but as a parent there's an anxiety that is incredible just to sit there and watch mm-hmm. because you're 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 worried about uh, your child's well-being right for example right. there was a great program for kids on the spectrum our special needs ki- kids it was tennis mm-hmm. and it was the first time uh, that I had to sit and my wife and I were sitting, we're watching, and our son's by himself. Mm-hmm. Um, and amongst of other kids, and my son happened to be more severe mm-hmm. on on the spectrum, mm-hmm. and uh, he needed to have someone one on one with him to participate in in the class, yeah. and it was incredibly n- nerve wracking. Like I would sweat, I sweat, I, I sweat more. There than I did with you this morning <laughs> in private class. You know, and I sweated a lot. Right, right, I mean, right. It worked out hard, but you know, there's a lot of anxiety, and so uh, being able to bond with your child and to be, be the coach, be, be, the, be coach. the coach instead of tell the coach what you do. Oh, it's yeah. it's great. Yeah, and you know, and it, I, and honestly, I think it's I don't I don't think it's very uh, fair is a, a terrible word, but I don't think it's fair to mm-hmm. have to just drop them off and have one person or two people with that don't know kids. much about him yeah because yeah. honestly my son is a handful at the house and it's just me and him mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then to have my child and then 10 other children with a coach right that's that's a challenging hour yeah, mm-hmm. and everybody has individual needs and that's mm-hmm. hard to do and so the ability to be there with him is fa- is incredible yeah, it, yeah. Really do- it really is a, an incredible journey to be mm-hmm. with him together on yeah, awesome. yeah, I couldn't be happier, man, to see this class rolling like this. Yeah. And uh, Chris Brooks reports to me uh, last week that more and more families mm-hmm. get in contact with him. That now we yeah. have like approximately like 10, 12 families involved to start next year. Oh, I'm and, thinking uh, it hard. I tell yeah, everybody. I yeah, know. you know, so uh, I really, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to expand this program. You know, like s- keep it non-profit for yeah. forever, mm. and uh, and donate my time and the space in the gym. You know, it's awesome to make this. You know, just 
to see these kids and the families bonding with jiu-jitsu that I didn't know that could be such a tool oh, it's amazing. For, for everything like your, your experience, you know, for me it's, it's another surprise of what jiu-jitsu can do to improve and benefit people's life out there. Oh, it's incredible. It's major. That it's class incredible. is major. And by the way, the, the new person that came in last week, I think you met him, right? Yeah, you mean the, the I new family that came I, in? I mean, I'm yeah. surprised no. you. I tell everybody there's about a, it, there's, so. a guy, there's a person that came in last week uh, that was recommended by their doctor from you right yeah. that you, they wanted to go to a class I recommend hey go to Jesus because yeah. Chris Diaz like having success with it with his kid and everything and then you just, you just mm-hmm. went in yeah. just everybody. because of that uh-huh. yeah. so that that make a difference now to that family yeah. mm-hmm. so that family is going to benefit just because of that impact that has in yours and what impact that has Chris Brook, uh, Chris Brook on theirs and that's just yeah. multiply everything yeah. and compound. So in the end of the day, we got uh, we got connected with so much stuff. Huh? We got connected with jujitsu yeah. first, and then we shared foundation training. That was <laughs> the, yeah, that really, that's the, the amazing thing that I've yeah. learned. You know, like I always want to thank my friend Jesse and Eric, these guys that's always opened the door for me. That, and to be honest, and I know you're wrapping it up, but I'm mm-hmm. gonna, if you don't mind, I'm gonna no, 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 you. please. Your foundation training. Um, it that is the reason why one I've been able to come back, mm-hmm. but two, uh, there's such an uh, an issue with opioids out there. Yes, oh, and man. when I had when I hurt my back, and I've always had back issues. I've had car accidents, and mm-hmm. there's m- many other reasons why. Mm-hmm. But the when I hurt my back in August 2018. I went to the hospital and I was given, you know, the typical pain meds mm-hmm. and I thought they were going to fix it. Right, right. right. <laughs> and I, they didn't. They told me. Same happened to me, man. They, Same. They said, hey, this is going to be a long journey mm-hmm. for you. Mm-hmm. And uh, here's a bottle of pills. Mm-hmm. And it was in a, a, a lot of pills. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they said, you know, you're going to have to, uh, you know, take this and then, and then, go see a specialist it's, right and it's a mask he's just and masking your pain will probably put in a surgery reality right. very soon right well you know the doctors ended up telling me you know and that therapy and but i was still uh, debilitated by pain yeah mm-hmm. and when um it came to it after three sessions with you mm-hmm. i i I, w- I was able to put the, the, the masking agent, the pills aside. And mm-hmm. that, that was phenomenal because yeah. those pills can do lifelong damage. Yes. Yes. And, uh, and I was lost. I lost jujitsu. Mm-hmm. I didn't know how I was going to be able to perform at work. Yeah, everything, and, yes. And then, um, You're not able to do like basic tasks anymore. And that same thing right. what's happening to me. Imagine having a jujitsu life. What's, I need my body functioning to do everything what I do was limited for the same thing, you know, bulge disc, limitation on the movement, right. stiffness. Yeah. And when I found out about foundation training, it was exactly the same thing, Chris. It was like 10 days after, you know, I was seeing light again and I see like these things works. Mm-hmm. And I remember, I'm never going to forget, uh, I was in Costa Rica with uh, Eric and Jesse. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were walking from the house to the beach. It was like two, three minutes walk. And uh, and Eric, like very emotional, he reported to me like, Jackson, uh, 10 years ago, I was in the worst spot of my life. I was broken with a back like pain because he had like, he have Eric Goodman have a bad back injury. Mm-hmm. They fused his spine, you mm. know, he did a surgeon, he f- fused his spine and his was very limited. Financially, mm-hmm. not well, mm. in pain, couldn't take the stress out doing a jiu-jitsu class or mm. doing the sports that we were doing at the time. And, uh, and he told me that one day he found that his pattern of the movement, that there is one spot, the way that he moved, that there is no pain there. And he started to practice. And of course, like everybody was saying like, ah, oh, this is nothing, this right, is this. Right. And he said, Jackson, there is one thing that I knew. I knew it works. The way that he told me, like, I knew it works. Mm-hmm. I knew that movement that I was creating there. I knew that works because I started to felt my body getting out of pain. And, uh, and the way that he told me that, you know, I'm never going to forget, like, the confidence and, like, 
experience the technique on his body, mm -hmm. feeling the results immediately, day by day, coming right, out, right. and the way that re he reports it, like I knew it works, so I trust on it, and we are here now in Costa Rica, yeah. and we are Ten years sharing later. this with the whole world, want to know about foundation training right now, right. because it's not a pill, it's not uh, right. doctor advice, it's not exercise, it's just the way we should move. Right. Yeah. You know, right. it's and amazing. When, you, when, you, when, you, when I went to the gym, and you were saying, check this out, Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, <laughs> another one. Yeah, I don't know, but I was lost. Mm -hmm. And I told you, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. And you, and you, you ran me through. I think it was like maybe three movements. Right. That's all I could do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I, I went home, and I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna give it a mm -hmm. shot because I was, you know, I, I don't believe in witchcraft or sorcery. Yeah, or this, yeah, that. yeah. But, but I will say, I did it. Mm -hmm. And then I start. I felt like, like you said, that the, you there's a little. It's like a looking through a straw, but there's light. There is light right there. You see, like need to find the so other. So after side. a week, I went back, and then we did it again. Mm -hmm. You gave me a couple others, and then it started coming out. And then on the third time, I was mm. like, "Hey, I'm done." Yeah. And then yeah. I, I'm yeah. almost sold on it. So yeah. Right. It it does work. It does sure. work. It does work. And uh, in the way that he was telling me, like from his eyes, I could see, like I knew it works. I knew. <laughs> it sounds like. Elio and Carlos Gracie talking right, right. about jiu-jitsu, you know, like, right. we no, know it, just, it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We know it works, and we can prove to you it works through a fight. Yeah, yeah. And I compare a lot, we share, we, we, we laugh ab about this there, like how I compare the jiu-jitsu born and the foundation training born, because both of them born out of a struggle, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Jiu-jitsu like was a small yeah. guy that wanted to defeat bigger opponents and be able to defend himself. And foundation training was pretty much the same thing, right? Yeah. A broken guy that found a technique that works. Mm -hmm. And then what do you have to do? UFC, uh, Jiu-Jitsu, create the UFC to prove to the world right. that Jiu-Jitsu was more efficient, right? right? Foundation training going through that phase now, you know, like of disbelief, like, no, give injection, do yeah. a surgery. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. better. Wow. All the doctors saying that there's other ways to do that that works but it doesn't doesn't yeah. work foundation training is the only way that you have the thing on your hand and it's up to you to fix it yeah instead of somebody come and give you a paper or give you instruction mm. it's on you now right. study it learn how it works understand the technique and the mechanics that everybody can do it yeah even me like i have no anatomy background or anything yeah. I was able to understand what's the pattern of the movement that was wrong mm -hmm. and I could fix it. And man, life now, Chris, you're going to see like with years of practice, yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. jiu-jitsu. Another, another comp comparison. It's like jiu-jitsu. You start Reps, as white bum, belt bum, 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 and yeah. you go crazy and then blue belt, you start to come down a little more and that's how it goes and foundation yeah. training is the same. Yeah, yeah. After a couple of years, my digestion starts to get better. The way I was driving was better oh yeah the driving you know like <laughs> the seating and everything so the life man now it's like yeah. it's enjoyable to move you know yeah. it's enjoyable to see something to pick up to get your daughter throw her anchor in the legs and holding things with your <laughs> whole body connecting together mm -hmm. you know so it's uh, it was a bless man it was yeah. a bless and, and uh, i'm very difference. happy that i could share that with you no, and it was awesome and that's the difference our norm a normal person that comes in an average person is so in pain that they say fix my pain. Yes. They don't say fix teach whatever me. is causing the pain. Teach me how yeah. to fix my pain. Whatever is yeah. causing the pain, just fix that. Yeah. But they just want to get rid of it, and that's the whole economy. No, you you there. know you you never had the back pain or anything because you are much younger and. Uh, but I'm your gonna body, avoid it. Your I'm body is <laughs> crying, but that's that's what I want to see. Like I know that I'm gonna I'm gonna know Rafael for a long time. Mm. I want to see like how he gonna uh, pass through this. The eye of the needle. You know, <laughs> 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 yeah. nice yeah. guys. Well, wow, what a what a good talk. What a yeah, good talk. Good Do you guys time. have anything else you guys would like to no, bring it what, up? Uh, I know that the Chris um, talking about autism and and everything involved with his kid. I think he has a beautiful book that he wants to share. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yes. My wife and I. You know, you're always looking for something to uh, to do together, mm -hmm. and so one of our one of the interesting things when my son had epilepsy and he he, he no longer is displaying seizures because uh, that's another story but mm -hmm. uh, he one of the ways we were able to interact with him was is reading books and my mm -hmm. wife uh, would read probably 30 
books, 30 to 35 books a day Whoa. to be able to get interaction with him. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then when I would come home from work, I would, re- I would want interaction with my child. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I would read about 10 books, mm-hmm. 10 or 15 books before bed, just, mm-hmm. just so he would sit down and pay, you know, sit with mm-hmm. you. And, and uh, that was what we had. And what was interesting over time, you, you kind of read books over and over and over again. And, <laughs> and, and start and some of the books are really hard to read <laughs> over and over again. So and I had many comment one day about, you know what, maybe we could write a book. I mean, we've read so many books for so many years every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, we could write a book. And one morning, uh, Alejandro had a very limited diet. And there were challenges on how... You know, every parent wants their child to eat mm-hmm. uh, healthy and, and to have a good palate, a variety of foods. And yeah. Alejandro, which we later found out was directly correlated or was correlated to his issues at the school with that bad teacher. Mm-hmm. Um, his mm. diet was bacon, Cheerios and blueberries <laughs> every meal. Mm-hmm. for a long time <laughs> well. and so we were very nervous and um, when, as one day I got up I got out of bed and I walked out and my wife went she went super hardcore and she cooked every meal she could think of for breakfast <laughs> to see if it would entice him to try uh-huh. something else <laughs> and she cooked french toast and I'm not just talking about one or two. She cooked a stack of French toast, a stack <laughs> of pancakes, bacon, bacon and eggs, uh, bacon and French toast. And it was just this, the <laughs> yeah, whole just table whole was mix. covered with food. And I'm like, Where, what's going on? Are we in a five-star restaurant or, or a hotel? And she, 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 was, she was very emotional because she was really scared mm-hmm. about the fact that he only had uh, only three Those things three he would things. eat. Mm-hmm. And uh, I said which maybe I shouldn't have. But I said, I think this would be a great book about him, you know, us trying to figure a way to get him to eat and put me in the doghouse for a little bit. You know, but... <laughs> the wrong timing, the wrong timing. The timing was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you can never... I've never been one for great timing, but uh, we, we, we ended up writing we ended up writing the book. Yeah. And I'd love to show it. If that's yeah. cool. It's very yeah, get it there, get it there. Oh, it's, uh, yeah. it's called Alejandro and the Bacon Breakfast. Right, right, right. And uh, it's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Walmart Online, Books mm-hmm. a Million. And we're having a great success. Yeah, and I read several times from my daughter, and she loves it. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's been a fantastic opportunity. and um, mm-hmm. So it, it, there's the... The the end of the story there, right? So don't share it to anybody so yeah, that way you can share. read. No, so I, I will not, I'm not share. I'm not buy share. and then you can read the end of it. If Alejandro they, the they got the the solution, if there. you know That's Alejandro, awesome. if you got to meet Alejandro, you're gonna understand how cute he is. <laughs> and I can like picture this whole story of Claudia ki- uh, cooking the breakfast. And it's, it's uh, it, was, it was crazy. In, in yeah. the back, it's it's. Everybody loves bacon, and so does Alejandro a little too much, <laughs> since that is currently his only breakfast wish. And it talks about the morning struggle with uh, a picky eater who only wants to eat bacon. Right. And I, the term picky eaters, a lot of people get, you know, some people get upset. I don't, yeah. You know, but in our family, our philosophy, and we are autism advocates Mm -hmm. is the sooner we can find common ground between one another the sooner we can accept each other's differences yeah and you know and that can be whether it's politics or work or even Mm jujitsu whatever you find common ground and we chose eating everybody likes to eat Mm -hmm. and a lot of parents have issues with their children being very selective or being right. a picky eater mm-hmm. and so our child who was only eating three uh, items of food mm-hmm. could be considered a picky eater he's very selective but it was because of his sensory issues right, mm-hmm. right. with his autism mm-hmm. so the common ground is picky eating being selective with the food 
And, but our difference is just a little bit because of his sensory issue. Yeah, and right. so we can find common ground. And that's mm -hmm. why we decided to, to write a book. And oh, there perfect. are there are others to come. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were, were out and trying to make it happen. Nice. Amazing. I really appreciate you sharing that. That's yeah, very nice. Thank you for everybody letting me share it. Should, yeah. Everybody should try the Alejandro and the Bacon book. It's yeah. really cool. You can join us on Facebook, <laughs> with Adventures with Alejandro, <laughs> or www.adventureswithalejandro.com we'd love yeah. for you to join the conversation yes amazing. very and, good and the, the most important part is to share this with someone that you know that has this a little bit of a struggle so share this so that way they can help with the story and everything not only, uh, not only can be the book the story of, uh, of Chris right with the whole thing I think it will be cool and nice to, to share with someone that has the same thing yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Very awesome. good. It was, was a pleasant talk with you guys. Awesome. I yeah. cannot describe how much I appreciate you spending the day here with us today. That was awesome. It was a great workout. Sharing your stories and all your experiences and the trust in the gym and, and what I do and in foundation training right now. On. We're going to always be here to support all your dreams. And uh, yeah. It was amazing. Thank, Thank you. you Chris. Thank, Thank you, you everybody. Thank you for listening. Obrigado, and, guys. Uh, I see you guys next time. <laughs>